All right, everybody. Thank you for being here on the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. I'm here with my guest, my good friend, Kirsten Foss. I'm sure many of you guys already know who she is. She's been in the spa industry as well in the spa industry for over 20 years, but working in the online space as a, a business coach and a mentor for estheticians and for spa owners. Um, that's actually how we met. I found Kirsten's website and was like, I have to know who this woman is. <laughs> I sent her an email and said, can we connect? And our friendship kind of grew and blossomed from there. And that was probably two years ago, maybe two, two plus years ago. Yeah, at least two years ago. I know I was living in DC and it was way before baby. So yeah, maybe even three years ago. Yeah. Um, but a really beautiful friendship has blossomed since then. And, and mm -hmm. what I've been so impressed by and so inspired by myself is your focus and attention on leadership really in the mm -hmm. past year. That's, I've kind of seen what you've been talking about through, you know, you do regular Facebook live posts, you, you know, all your courses and trainings and social media and everything has really shifted a lot into leadership. So, um, well, let me first just say thank you for being here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> um, so, Tell, tell us a little bit about your background for those of you who haven't been introduced, you know, who you haven't met yet and, and really how your journey led you into this leadership space. Hmm. So I've been an esthetician, uh, actually almost 25 years now. It's hard to believe. I felt like that first year, I was always so embarrassed when people with clients would ask me, how long have you been an esthetician? And I, I couldn't wait till I could say, I've been an esthetician for a year, but now it's like creeping up on 25. Um, and a lot has happened in the spa industry. Oh yeah. And, uh, like so much. So I got started right when it was really in the infancy stage of the spa concept and I had always, I had entered the industry with the, with the focus, and I'm, I feel very, very fortunate that I've always had this uh, knowing, this real inner knowing that I wanted to work with women mm -hmm. uh, in a leadership role. And actually, I was 16 when I, when I realized that. And at the time, I thought it had to do with uh, physical fitness because I used to be a competitive swimmer. But as I was looking what into- What caused you to realize that? Sorry to interrupt, but that was um, really like 16. No, I mean, I think about what I was doing when I was 16 and I didn't, I was not thinking about helping women. <laughs> you know, like well, it, it really was um, born out of watching my own mom struggle with her confidence. Yes. Okay. And, um, you know, ever since I was a little girl, she was wondering where I got this confidence from because she just didn't have it. And so she would often- um, get me to ask somebody at the supermarket where something was because she was too shy to go to that uh, person and ask for themselves. So I've always had this inner confidence of, yeah, I can do that. Or, and even if I didn't know how to do that, it was like, I'll figure it out how to do that. Mm -hmm. So, um, so part of that is, I think just part of my personality, mm -hmm. I'm an oldest child. So there's that too. Mm -hmm. Um, but at 16, I really watched my mom suffer, um, in, in kind of just not living her, the life that she wanted to live. And that at that time I saw it more as, um, the vision that I had was actually to open up a gym for women only. And this was kind of pre women only gym even mm -hmm. and I wanted to not just have a place for them to work out with the whole concept that they would feel better about themselves and when they feel better about themselves they go out into the world and they um they they're their own leaders for their children uh, with their relationships um and it just kind of it's just this ripple effect mm -hmm. uh, I even wanted to add interestingly enough I wanted to add financial courses for women because I saw that as a gap mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was really interesting when I discovered the spa industry and I really had no idea about aesthetics or anything my mom didn't go for those treatments so it was when I was uh, waitressing and I finished two years of college and was planning on going into uh, to university that I ran into a friend of a friend and she had just finished aesthetics and when I asked her about it 
all of a sudden this click happened, this, this connection happened. And I realized as I did my research, I'm like this, this is where I want to make a difference in women's lives. Mm -hmm. And it had less to do with about making them pretty, um, but much more about really giving to them and helping them to fill up inside so that when they go home, that ripple effect happens at home. The and healing component of what yes. we do was drawing you. Wow. Yeah. I wish I was so, friends with you when I was 16. <laughs> I was the weirdo 16 year old who had like, I'd mapped out what I want my, what the business to look like, the floor plan of the business. I remember showing my grandma and everything. She, You're a natural entrepreneur. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, it's always been there. And so as I, as I entered the, the spa industry, I knew that I had lots to learn just for skill set. But I always had this real core belief and vision about creating a place for women that to, to grow and support and help heal their self-worth because that's, that's that kind of core confidence. And really that's where leadership is born out of is that that's kind of that inner knowing of um, they can handle it, whatever it is. We may not know the answers, but it's that inner knowing of, okay, I'll figure it out. So you figured out when you were 16, kind of what your life's mission would be, even mm -hmm. though you didn't know the exact path of how to get there. You had about, you had quite a bit of time that you were a spa owner and it's, and have been doing other things. And it's really in the past year that I've noticed a big shift in you that maybe your really stepping into your own or maybe you really now after all of this time understand what a gift you have to share with the industry I, i'm just kind of speculating here but what is it that really shifted you to because i see every time i'm through scrolling through and i see your instagram with the women who lead and all of these things i'm like i love her <laughs> you know so what was it that really made that shift for you to focus so much on leadership in directly rather than indirectly as you were doing before. Well, I think that's really what it, what it was about. It was, it was a, a place I was getting a bit frustrated with, okay, what exactly is the problem here as far as spa owners? What, what is the core, core issue? And a lot of times, you know, we can throw marketing band-aids on things and, you know, we can throw all sorts of little business band -aids. systems. Yeah. But you know, when you dial it right back, if as an owner, an entrepreneur, you just don't have that confidence to step up into your leadership, that's, that's really where it, it's broken down. So any kind of marketing tactics that you want to implement, any kind of you know, ideas for growing your business, whether it's adding a new product line or a new machine or, you know, whatever it is, if you don't have that core belief in yourself and understanding about uh, how, to, how you can lead, everything else kind of just gets a lot harder or else it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of got, um, I don't know, I kind of feel like I just hit the wall. It's like, okay, enough is enough. <laughs> You know, let's, let's talk about and let's work on the core piece of business, like from the foundation, where does it need to start? It needs to start with leadership. And I really feel like, especially in this past year, um, and I think this is where it starts dovetailing, is that we've seen women around the world really stepping up with their voices and with their actions business or personal we've seen that happening around the world and i think that it's me starting to focus on primarily leadership is just um it's kind of part of that energy it felt like for me it's time it's time for us to really step up to speak what we need to speak in our business be clear about it be honest about it um so yeah so i just feel like it's i feel like the world is ready for us to to kind of to get it together well, our leader. It, it, this is slightly off topic, but it, it we really saw that energy that you're talking about with the women's movement um, mm -hmm. after the U.S. presidential election. Um, that entire women's march was started by a woman in Maui, where mm -hmm. you guys don't know, I live in Hawaii, I live on the island of Oahu, but NPR did a story on this woman, and it was just one woman 
her idea of being fed up, just like what you're saying. And she made a, she took action and globally shifted. I mean, look at the impact that she, that she made. And, you know, I love talking about this uh, because so often, um, you know, we feel that we're just one person and our actions don't make a difference. And I was just talking with a friend of mine and, and quoting the Dalai Lama and, and doing a terrible job at it. But he, <laughs> he said something like, if you don't think that one person can make a difference, try being locked in a small room with a mosquito. And it's that <laughs> one, you know, that constant little buzzing or whatever. It's like, it's like you really, your actions make a difference, whether you're one woman in Maui who starts a global movement or you're, you know, a spa coach in BC that, you know, wants to do her part to change the world. It doesn't matter if you're a solo esthetician. I think we underestimate our impact and so much <laughs> our our need to even even if it's just ourselves even if we're just a solo esthetician and I kind of hate that word just because mm-hmm. you know even if you are a solo esthetician yeah. your impact that you're making on your clients that is where you need to lead as well because you, that transfer of energy um, absolutely makes I mean a difference. Every day as a service provider, you have that impact on every person that comes into your treatment room. And, and that's the impact that you can have in your community is exponential. You know, it's that what I was talking about, that ripple effect. She comes in for a skin treatment, but, you know, when she's going home, she's interacting with her kids, her family, her friends, uh, her, her colleagues, those people are interacting with other people. And so we have a tremendous amount of influence over our communities. And I don't think that spot owners realize that. I think a lot of times spot owners get kind of caught up in the minutia of their business and the service offerings. But when we really peel back a lot of that, it's, it's, we have an incredible amount of impact as leaders in our communities in, in ways I think that most ball owners have really haven't thought about it. Mm -hmm. So in order to really impact our communities and make a difference in our community, kind of one woman at a time, um, it, it really starts with us as leaders, as spa owners, uh, what we believe in, what are our values? What do we stand up for? What do we, how are we speaking? Are we minim- using minimizing words uh, in, when we talk to people that minimizes our impact of our words? Mm-hmm. So there's all sorts of little pieces as we interact with our staff, as we interact with our clients that can have an incredible impact on people's lives and our communities. Just like you said, with that one woman starting the concept of the Women's March. Mm-hmm. Very, very powerful. So, okay. So I'm a solo esthetician. I want to make a difference. I want to be a leader. I'm resonating with what you're saying, but I have no idea where to start. What do I do? Well, leadership really, it starts with personal awareness, Mm -hmm. you know, paying attention to what you're doing. Uh, You know, so let's say, for example, just take for marketing, for example, and you're a solo and you've been trying things with your marketing and you're kind of like all over the place. You try a little bit here and you try a little bit over there. When you're ready to step into your leadership, it's about taking that pause and being and having some self-awareness like, okay, what is, you know, the efforts that I've been putting into what's working, what's not, and kind of starting to dig into those little crevices so that we're not just kind of blindly repeating mistakes that because we because we just haven't been paying attention. So I mean that's just one example for for one thing with marketing, but it really does start with personal awareness. Mm-hmm. And that starts with pausing when when things come up in our in our business. So rather than being reactive to them, sometimes we need to be reactive, but knowing that we may, might need to take a little pause mm-hmm. so that we can shift out of a reactive brain and going to move into more of a thinking brain mm-hmm. so that we can have start having some self-awareness. So when I do um this just kind of came to mind when I do coaching with estheticians, I'll I'll talk about 
intangible things because we talk about building confidence as, as part of the sales process, which is really where I spend a lot of my time. And um, the example that I give to explain these kind of intangible qualities is if you've walked into a room and someone's having an awkward conversation, you can feel that energy mm -hmm. and you can sense that something's going on, even though no words are being said, no, it's, it's almost like a sixth sense that we have. And what I was thinking of when you were saying that is that, you know, if we don't have that self-awareness, if you're just a busy person, you rush in the room, you rush out, you have no idea that weird energy that's going on unless you take that pause. I think that that's, that's if I'm understanding what you're saying mm -hmm. correctly, Absolutely. that's what's really making sense to me. And so rather than having the shiny object syndrome and well, this person's doing a blog and this person's doing Facebook ads and this person's doing um, network marketing and this person's doing, it's, it's about learning what you stand for and your brand and your core values, committing to that process of what you believe in and kind of moving well, forward from there, right? Absolutely. And even, and even kind of, um, you know, taking up that pause to, okay, so she's doing blogging over here. She's doing this over there. This all looks very cool and they look like they're, you know, it's working for them, but it's also having that pause for analyzing it. Okay. Blogging. Do I like writing? <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I, you know, if you're a person like I hate it, <laughs> then, you know, like, stop trying to fit a, you know, a square peg in a round hole. Mm -hmm. So, but there might be other options. Maybe you don't mind doing video recording so you could vlog instead of blogging. You're not writing. Mm -hmm. um, um, same with like networking. It, that might not certain networking um, uh, opportunities just might not be a right fit for you. So it's having, once we pause and kind of suss out the situation, then we can give ourselves a chance to figure out what fits with, um, with our personalities, with the time that we have, uh, with our resources that we have and not in a way to just make excuses, but to really, uh, discern. And that's that other piece of leadership is to be able to discern be to, as far as making decisions so that we're not just copying because so-and-so is doing it and it looks like it's working for them, but to be able to pause, analyze, discern whether this is actually the correct pathway for you to go down for marketing, for example. And what I found with marketing is that nothing really works overnight. You have to be committed to the process, whether your process is blogging, whether your process is vlogging, and even if Facebook, you're doing Facebook ads, Facebook all, all ads. Of yeah, there's testing that goes into it. It's not the people that if you see someone doing a blog that it's working really well, it, it's kind of like that, that infographic with the iceberg where it's yeah. like, you know, you see, you're seeing the tip that's like, wow, that's so amazing, but not all the work that went into it. And how did I make this happen? So what kind of advice would you give to someone who is in that discerning process? Like, how do I figure out what I like or what I'm good at without, in the most efficient way? Like, I don't want to do a blog and say, Oh, I'm hating this, but I need to be consistent with it for it to work. Like any kind of tips that you have for someone that's really struggling to figure that out. Maybe they're new to marketing. And well, I think the first thing is to really look at, um, you know, starting with the, the, the basics, starting with simplicity and then building out from there. You know, if you're new to marketing or if it just kind of overwhelms you in general, start with the basics. Uh, and I break it down into four categories, email marketing, social media marketing, website, and in spa marketing. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, email marketing, marketing can get kind of super complicated. We could, we could choose to go into, you know, creating an email funnel and all sorts of sequences, or we can just keep it simple and, you know, have two emails amount a month sent out. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, same with social media. It can get really complicated if you want it to, but if you're not feeling super confident, we just got to start with the basics from there. 
So that's, that's usually where, what I recommend for people is start with the basics and then build out from there. As you start feeling more confident with your system, your marketing system, um, and then be able to know, you know, once you feel confident with the basics, then you can start discerning where you want to be paying more attention to, because by then you should start seeing some, you know, results coming in to give you some idea about kind of where to put your, your attention to next. Yeah, I think that's really great advice because so many people, you know, do I have to be on Pinterest? Do I have to be on LinkedIn? Do I have to be on Facebook? Do I have to be on Instagram? Do I have to be on Twitter? No, you know, there are people like I always recommend starting with one platform, mastering that platform and your strategy and then expanding from there. And, you know, the world's not going to end if you don't have an Instagram page. Like, (laughs) You know, well, and the, thing, the thing too is like, I want to speak to that, that what you were saying before is that it doesn't happen overnight and it takes, we, we seem to all as entrepreneurs, we always expect it to work a lot faster than it does. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, it, so a lot of this has to do with expectation adjustments <laughs> and, and kind of what's, what's kind of appropriate to expect. Um, and so when you realize that things like marketing, like if you're, if you're just getting started with email marketing, it's going to take you six months to start getting the flow of, and the rhythm of your system, of how many emails to send out, the kind of subject lines that work, the content that's works and stuff that doesn't work. And so I find a lot of times spa owners are just not willing to put the time in to uh, to figure it out. They want like fast, they want it to work fast. They want to figure it out fast. And then when they don't do that, they drop it like a hot potato and they've just left a huge opportunity behind because it hasn't worked fast enough for them. But that's that part of leadership. They're not giving themselves enough time to action it out, to be able to see those results so they can make some decisions. So one of the things that I have noticed with solo estheticians and and not all solo estheticians, but there are a lot of, I feel like there's kind of this disconnect for certain people when they say, I'm going to be a solo esthetician. They're not actually realizing that they are going to be an entrepreneur. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I don't mean that in a, in a bad way. You're saying, yeah. Yeah. It's because there's this well, you go to school to be an esthetician. You think like, I want to help people. I want to help women feel their best. I want to do all of these, you know, really positive, positive and admirable things. Right. And, but when you, if you don't want to work at a spa, if you want to be a solo esthetician, rent your own room, make your own schedule, choose your own products, all the benefits that go along with that, you really you're really picking the hardest job that there is because (laughs) to be a solo esthetician, you have to be the entrepreneur, the manager and the technician. And I'm referring to um, Michael Gerber's book, the E-Myth revisited, Mm -hmm. which is one of my favorite, favorite books for business. So if you are a solo esthetician or spa owner, please read that if you haven't already. Yeah, that, that um, should be actually required reading. If you have the inkling that you want to uh, open up your own business, no matter how small, that need you need to read that book. Absolutely. Yeah, and so the story in there, he's it's the opening story is about this woman named Sarah who is opening a pie shop, and she she loves making pies. She has this great story of making pies with her aunt and. So she says, I love making pies so much. And we are told over and over, do what you love, do what you love, do what you love. And you'll never work another day in your life. But she opens a pie shop and then she hates it because she is actually having, she's not just making pies. She's doing a heck of a lot more. And I think that we see that whole thing with solo estheticians. Uh, You know, if you're doing a room rental, if you're wanting to move into your own space so you can have the benefits of entrepreneurship, which is freedom of your schedule, um, income possibilities, right? Uh, Mm -hmm. All of these great things, but there's a cost to that. And the cost is that you have to run your business. You have to work on your business, which means You have to do the testing for the email marketing. You have to understand social media. You have to educate yourself Mm -hmm. so that you can 
be in that in a competitive position and you can make more you know in the in the states the average uh salary for an esthetician is thirty thousand a year i don't know what it is in canada I Um, i think it's about the same yeah and it's there's clearly something going on when we have a, you know a, a very decent size of estheticians who are making six figure incomes and then but the average is at that 30,000 mark there's a big huge gap yeah you know yeah. and it really for me um goes into that lack of business education which can then also be connected with leadership and confidence because you don't know what you don't know, right? So if they're, exactly. if they're not in that kind of leadership frame of mind, maybe they're not going to be going out seeking that education or seeking the, the skills that they need to really sure. create a thriving it's, business. It's, it's not enough to open a business on your aesthetic skill set alone. It, it's just absolutely 100% not. And, you're, and you'd be fooling yourself to believe that it is. And I think that every uh, esthetician who turned into solo or a uh, spa as a team realizes that. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons why I decided to shift into, out of hands-on aesthetics and into coaching is because they're, you know, we're, we're not really, you know, while we go to school, we're not really told that much about business. You know, we're kind of given a, a gloss over. Zero. Yeah. And, and we're, and we're not, like in Canada, there's usually like a module for business, but it's just so, it's so tiny. It doesn't even scratch the surface of what you need to know. And unfortunately, um, you know, a lot of estheticians go into this industry, not real and wanting to own their own business, not even having any concept of what the other side of the spa is, the business aspect of it. Mm-hmm. And what's going to be required of them. Leadership means you have to step up. Leadership means that you have to do the stuff that isn't fun all the time. Leadership is having difficult conversations. Leadership is making difficult decisions. And so that, that kind of doesn't jive with being in the treatment room and giving feel and, and making people feel good. It's, it's very, it's a rub that often stresses out a lot of spa owners until they get to the point where they realize they have to accept that moment where they have to accept their leadership, the position that they're in. Mm -hmm. And I find once they do, then it's like, okay, now we can hit the ground running. Now we can make those changes. But until if there's this constant friction of, I don't like, you know, I don't like that business side of it. I don't like numbers. I just want to be in a treatment room. Guaranteed you will always struggle to, to grow your business. And when we talk about numbers, so uh, one of my kind of sayings that's, not, I guess I can't claim it, but uh, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. I say that yes. all the time and, and we hear it a lot in business and, and you talk a lot about numbers. Mm-hmm. You have a program called. Yeah. Cash drop to cash flow. And my, my thing that I like to say is numbers don't lie. Right. We often as entrepreneurs, it's very easy to lie to ourselves because it's perception. You know, when we're when we're kind of looking at how things are going, we can have this perception that we're busy enough. But when we really look at our num- our numbers, like our productivity numbers, like how what's what percentage are we actually booked? When we see those numbers, we're like, oh, I thought I was, we were actually busier than that. <laughs> so well, numbers and don't lie. The big one is profit margin, right? Mm-hmm. So you can be looking at your business and in 2017, you did a hundred thousand. And in 2018, you did 125,000. So your revenue is going up, but if you're not measuring your profit margin, say in 2018 with your $125,000 year, your profit margin could have shrunk by 5% and your business is actually slowly dying. So there's so many important metrics to track. Um, and, and that is part of, being a business owner, part of stepping into that role. And, and I do want to address one thing that you said about leadership. You're saying, you know, having hard discussions is not fun or, you know, like all of those things that go with leadership. And, and that's true. Like, it's, it's not like people wake up in the morning and are like, I really want to have a really challenging (laughs) conversation with someone today, but I've noticed you know, because 
I have experience as a spa director and, and, and I know you've been a spa owner in the past. And so I'm sure you've had to have a lot of hard conversations as well. But when you actually step into the role and you have those conversations, nine times out of 10, that individual is going to come back to you and thank you because that's what, that's what you need to help you grow, right? Like people want to avoid the conversation, but it's like, we all need constructive feedback. We all need guidance. No person on the planet is perfect. And, you know, we all go through our own struggles and we all go through our own growing pains. And if we didn't have um, people that were willing to shine the light on our blind spots, we would just be stuck, you know? So it's actually such a gift when someone can give you constructive feedback or give you even those negative reviews, you know, if you have a negative review, that's it, sometimes they're not valid, but sometimes it's like shining a light on, Hey, maybe I should be giving a little more time to my client or, or whatever it is, you know? And I think that when you have a leadership mindset of how can I be the best and how can I take this, this feedback in it's, it's just about shifting your perspective on anything that happens in your business. Absolutely. And, and being a leader also means learning how to communicate. Okay. I think a lot of times when difficult conversations aren't need to be had or difficult decision needs to be made, I, what I hear a lot of, and I've known this is true for myself, is that sometimes we just don't know how the words to use and kind of the position to come at it from. Mm-hmm. And that's where that kind of reactive brain versus thinking brain comes in. So when we're in our reactive brain, it's a little easier to kind of, you know, maybe say something that we shouldn't have versus waiting until we can give ourselves a pause and coming from that, um, you know, that thinking brain where we can like, okay, so, you know, and be able to problem solve compassionately and kindly, but firmly and you know these are the boundaries and to be able to work through it mm-hmm. and that's what I was I had mentioned at the beginning like leadership is kind of that that confidence of knowing we can get through this I mean no not know exactly at this moment what the solution is but I, I really do trust that I can have an awkward conversation with you and we can move through it and get on to get to the other side and both of us are going to feel okay at, at the end of that conversation. Not one person feeling really crappy because I've just like the all over them. Yeah. I think that's how you make a marriage work too. <laughs> totally. Marriage, <laughs> children. <laughs> we can have the awkward conversation and be closer because of it and work through it together. I mean, that's, oh that's great advice for business, personal, everything. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. So, all right. What are some resources uh, that people can reach out to, and we'll be sure to include these in the show notes. Um, but what are some resources that people are wanting to get more into leadership and, and really dive into this topic? Where can they go? What can they do? Uh, well, you can definitely, I've got, um, a lot of blog posts, um, on my website at kirstenfoss.com. Um, I also, um, You know, with leadership, I find that I find that a lot of times I'm paying attention to actually what's happening in my own personal life Mm -hmm. really, really does help me with how to deal with things in my, in my business life as well. So just paying attention to what, when stuff comes up, when those difficult conversations come up, those awkward things come up, the decisions that you need to make, um, knowing kind of when to pause to be able to, even if you don't know what to do, to be able to just like pause and look around and, and start kind of discerning what might be going on. Um, other books that I have um, for resources that one of my favorites is Tara Moore uh, is uh, was, uh, I think it's called playing big. He's a real, that was a really great uh, book for particularly women in leadership Um, It's a little bit more on the corporate side of it, but I know that there's tons of little gold nuggets in there that you could pull out um, and and spa owners can pull out for kind of sorting out their own kind of their own leadership and developing their own leadership as well. 
So we'll be sure to link that up and link up some of your blog posts. And, and I just wanted to add that for me and my own personal growth, um, having a community of peers around you. So whether, you know, whatever stage you're in, whether that is a Facebook group, I know, mm -hmm. you know, we have the Estheticians Connect Facebook group. Kirsten has her own yeah. Facebook group. Yeah. Small business um, mastery there. Yeah. You know, we'll link both of those up in the show notes as well, but like, it, having a community, having a coaching group that you're a part of, having a mastermind that you're a part of, um, having somewhere that you have peers that will hold you accountable and that will have those tough conversations with you and, and really say, Hey, are you, are you taking a pause? Are you, you know, wanting to learn and grow? That's been really, really helpful for me specifically in, in my coaching group that I'm in. Um, so don't underestimate those um, those communities. And if it's, if you're not in a place financially to join a coaching group, there's, there's free options out there. You can have a peer based group. You can connect on social media. You know, the, the people are out there The it's out there. You just have to find it yourself and, and be committed and hold yourself accountable. And one of the things that I recommend doing, uh, as far as having that kind of personal support group mm -hmm. is, you know, sometimes it can be hard to get that support from some of these really big uh, Facebook groups, like mm -hmm. the estheticians Facebook groups, because mm -hmm. there's so many people and, and not everybody um, gives great advice. And so my advice is always to have a circle of trust. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a handful of people that you really truly trust, they trust you and that you can you know, have quick communication, whether it's just by Facebook Messenger or whether it's text message uh, or whether you can hop on a Skype call with somebody. But having that kind of core group of you know, four or five people in your life that you can't, that you very much trust their opinions. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also that, that concept, I can't remember where it came from, but uh, it ha I think it has to, like, a, you're the sum of, the five people you hang around with it's most. It's Jim Rohn. You're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Yes. That, that, that's so true. Mm -hmm. So if you can, it takes a little bit of time sometimes if you don't have a circle of trust, have your own kind of council of trust. But um, you, you may even want to put, actually, I did this for myself. I wrote down, you know, five, uh, you know, num number one to five, and I wrote down the people who were in my circle of trust because I hadn't really done that exercise before, and I had two spots open, and so I just I put in there position open, you know, job available, <laughs> and so that I let in the universe know. <laughs> I just put it out there in the universe that I'm I'm looking for people to 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 be in my circle of trust, and so if you don't have that yet, then it's time to start cultivating that. Yeah. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with, um, you know, when I got into online business, I mean, look how we met, we yeah. sent one another, a, an email and we are, a lot of people would look at us as competitors, you know, and we're, and that is so, I know you don't feel that way. I don't feel <laughs> that way at all, you know, and, but it's like, all it took was, Hey, I'm going to send an email and see, you know, this, this woman looks amazing. I'm going to connect with her. And, and, so many of my closest girlfriends, I mean, my two, who I would consider two of my best friends, um, Tara Zerker and Nicole Simpson, uh, I met through kind of random introductions. And, you know, we became so close. We all had babies at the same time <laughs> and, you know, are, are addressing life in, the, in, in that way and going through the same kind of struggles of being new moms and, and, trying and entrepreneurs, moms and, entrepreneurs and <laughs> yeah. yeah and so it's one of those things that it's like you I know how it feels to be starting out in business and not feel like you have friends that can relate to what you're trying to do because um you know if you're going out so so many people in our industry have to deal with oh you went to beauty school or oh you have you know you're not having a real job or whatever that is and and first of all, that's so not the case. Um, you are doing a real job and you are doing something that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. um, but just give yourself time to find people that, you know, Kirsten's exactly right with the, um, you know, the groups can be really big. 
and it's not like you want to share your deepest, darkest secrets <laughs> or fears in there. But what you can do is find people who you respect and who you want to build deeper relationships with and send them a message and see if they want to hop on a Skype call or a Zoom call or whatever and, and really kind of build the relationship from there. And that's, um, you know, with my girlfriend, Nicole, we met because I wanted to do a blog post with her and we just, you know, hit came hit it off and, you know, now it's like on a daily basis. Hey, what's going on? You know, it's one of those things that, so the people are out there and it's, it it will happen if you put the energy into finding the right people and getting them into your circle of trust. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and if you don't have that, do just what you did, Kirsten is, is put that out there to the universe and say, I'm looking for um, five people to be in my circle and to be to have my back and to have hard conversations, but know that it's okay because they're doing that with love because they really want the best for me. Absolutely. I love that. (laughs) And if you know, like if you're, if you're in a, like if you're in a hurry as an entrepreneur, like you need help stat, that's when you need to turn to, um, you know, coaching groups or one-on-one coaching because you just, you need to get in there. You don't have any time to waste, but you know, you can do both, but if you know that you are in a pickle <laughs> and you know you need to step on your leader, step up your leadership ASAP, then there's definitely that time where you need to invest in yourself and, and get the help you need. Perfect. Well, thank you so much um, for this. Okay. We're definitely going to include your website and some blog posts. Where else can people connect with you if they're wanting to learn more about what you do? And, and- um, I'm on uh, Facebook uh, under Kirsten Foss Coaching. And like you had mentioned at the beginning, I do a weekly uh, Facebook Live Spa Business Break show every Thursday at 12 noon Pacific. And um, I'm also on Instagram at Kirsten underscore Foss. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much.